Hi, kitty cats. I am Amethyst Herrick, your hostess for Gender Identity Weekly, a weekly discussion about identity and gender from the contributors and guests of the Purple Paw Publications website, genderidentitytoday.com. This content is brought to you by subscribers of genderidentitytoday.com. If you are already a subscriber, first of all, just thank you for your ongoing support. You know very well that subscribers not only receive new content directly to their inboxes as soon as it publishes, but are also able to interact with every contributor directly, including me and hell, who wouldn't, right? So if you would like to support shows just like this one, as well as other podcasts, videos, and written articles by all of our contributors, not just me, please consider subscribing using the links you're going to find down there in the show notes. So today I am extremely excited to introduce Kylie Weathers. Hi, Kylie. Hey, how's it going? Excited to be here. You know, yeah, it was a boring morning, but now <sighs> we're talking and, and things have gotten much better. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. man. Well, I guess we're, we're set for a good show then, I guess. <laughs> right. You, you know, I have, there's a joke I always want to tell that I was hoping you would use, but I kind of th th screwed it up for you because okay. I want people to say... I want people to say, hey, you know, it was it was a bad week, but now I'm talking to you so that I can go, ooh, did it did it get better or worse? Because <laughs> who knows, you know. Do you but, want me to try it? <laughs> no, we don't have to go back and do it. But, <laughs> but I'm hoping someday somebody does it. Well, That's now amazing. I'm here talking to you and, oh, shit, so things went pear-shaped, I guess. I'm sorry to hear that, you know. <laughs> Let's start again. Anyway, Kylie, Kylie is an attachment coach and, and newly into podcasting, which is awesome. Yes. Exciting. Kylie is the founder of Queerly Attached, queerlyattached.net, by the way, go to this. Um, and Kylie is engaged in coaching uh, queer people in becoming secure in all of our relationships. And so this is where Kylie and I kind of overlap. And that's why we wanted to talk. Yeah. Yeah. So... Let me ask you the first question, because I know that this really informs a lot of your, well, wh where you've gone. Okay. You were raised Mormon. That's correct. I was. How did that... <laughs> oh, already, we're going to go back to the joke of, ooh, my week just got worse. <laughs> you have to remind me? No. <laughs> Better or worse. Better or worse. <laughs> how did that upbringing, how did being raised Mormon really create the person you are today. Mm, I like that word create. I uh, actually used it this morning in a, in a post I was writing about just this understanding of all these Kylie's put together, right? It's like this embodied Kylie. And I was doing some reflecting because it's my birthday week. So I was talking in that post about how I realized like I am a creator. We all are, right? We create our lives with these choices. So being a Mormon, um, there wasn't a lot of choice, which is interesting mm -hmm. because a lot of time is spent on what at the time they called free agency, right? That we all have this ability to choose. But growing up in my household, um, it was military. Uh, so there was that aspect of it. And then also the Mormonism, it was, they paired really well together. Um, and I, I didn't realize that I was gay until I was 16. I don't remember having much like, for sure I was I remember like AIM. You remember AOL and some messenger? I do, yeah. <laughs> I remember going on there at like 11 and pretending to be a boy or something, right? Like that kind of shit started happening yeah, when yeah. I was like coming through those preteen years. And um, I don't think I've ever told anybody that. And um, anyway, 16, I end up meeting my first girlfriend. And once that got caught, right, that was when everything kind of flipped. And so I think I see that as like a, a, a moment in time. I don't really know who I was before then, to be honest. I don't remember a lot of it. Yeah. Sorry, let me catch this. What do you mean? Sorry, getting emotional. So I'm trying to catch it before I... No, don't don't catch it. I mean, because I'm curious. The the You didn't know who you were before that. I love how, how you brought up free agency because it's free agency... So long as you choose what we want you to believe, right? Right. Yes, exactly. They take, hold on. Yeah. I get emotional because it is like, it is so much, it informs who you are. This religion is very high demand 
And um, there's a lot of like fear of disappointing authorities and attachment figures. And so that's why for me, when I started to first learn about attachment theory and like all those things, I just, I saw now my story differently. I could see how so much of it was choice. Mm. And I think we talked about choice. Maybe that was before we were recording, but we talked about choice and just that that's how you're creating these moments. So after the being caught, um, they, we went through a lot of just like repentance and we got to, you know, we can pray this away kind of thing. Um, therapists and bishops and all of that. So I was a damn good Mormon. I was like president of all the things I loved. I I'm, I love to read and I loved the scriptures. Like I, I thought I liked processing like other ways to see it. I was always like a teacher. Um, a lot of who I am is because I was Mormon. I think from three years old and on, we're taught to public speak. We're taught to like prepare a lesson, prepare a plan. Like I am a teacher. I am an educator, you know? Um, and so much of that came from learning at church. Unfortunately, being gay and doing that doesn't really jive. And so <clears throat> after serving my mission for the church, I went to Argentina and came home early because, well, because gay. <laughs> and, you know, you mentioned so, uh, you got caught. Yeah, yeah you, uh, well, we didn't get caught. Um, I confessed. I confessed. I oh. confessed. I couldn't deal, right? I couldn't deal. It was so difficult to be wearing this mask, right? It was so hard mm. at that time. And I just couldn't anymore. I knew I wasn't going to make it. Well, what? Mm. So much to follow up. No, no. The thing is that like, I'm, I, I don't understand. I know that, that there's a, the mission, the purpose of a mission is to go out and make the world a better place. If I understand correctly. Really right? Yeah. I'm really surprised by the emotion. And I think it is because of um, this post that I wrote this morning was about, I was writing about this mission and I was realizing I was so hesitant on my mission to speak. Uh, I was learning Spanish. We had to do it in Spanish. right? <laughs> in like, sure. um, and we were encouraged to, to talk to people in the streets and well, in Argentina, you clap door, you don't knock doors. So like you stand outside and clap and, um, but I was terrified. I was terrified to say it wrong. I was terrified. There was just something that just, and over time I realized that that is what the church did to me. Like I, I oh. have a lot of like throat chakra shit that I have to like yeah. get through. And so that has what the imposter syndrome, all of that stuff is all like, I'm shedding it. I don't want that anymore. Like that's not who I am. And these people, Parts of me, though, right, got wounded through these experiences and not yeah. dealing with that wounding is how I continue to make choices that weren't actually lining up with who I really, truly was. It was like being stripped of your intuition, right? I feel like sometimes it was like they took our intuition and then they're like, this is the Holy Ghost. And you can only feel this and, you know, hear this if you do ABC, right? And right. I shared a funny TikTok. You should go see it on TikTok. Okay. I shared a funny like um, confession of a high ex Mormon, right? And it was <laughs> it was like basically just that like, all right. My parents asked me and my brothers. They asked us to read the Book of Mormon before we turned eight, which is when we would have been baptized. So to oh, read boy. the entire book before eight is a lot. And. Yeah. And the night before my baptism, I was struggling because I had not completed it. I had skipped an entire section because it was too fucking difficult. <laughs> it was no high Isaiah chapters, awful. Didn't understand it, skipped it, and lied and said that I had completed this reading. Now oh. I'm going to the waters of baptism, right? But I remember yeah. thinking like, okay, well, I lied and I'm about to have all my sins washed away. So I think it'll be fine because then it'll be fine. It'll be like it didn't happen, right? Sure. For that next Maybe. year. I was stressed about this Holy Ghost that I had been given, right? And I was like, was it real? Did it really happen? Like, did it count? Because I went in with a lot, like from seven, seven to nine years old, like that's just, I have a 10 year old now. And I'm like, I can't imagine him being pressed with that kind of shit. Right, right. It, actually, that's a beautiful, I had a question and I wasn't sure how to introduce it. Being pressed with that shit. I was going to say, what did it feel like then at 16? When 
I mean, did everything just drop away? Did you suddenly go, oh gosh, no, this is me having to be me. Mm. Not. Yeah, that it's, uh, God, we're like getting the tender shit. So this is, we are. <laughs> no, it's good. It's, I need to be able to speak on this and, and I, I'm never like, I'm not trying to not cry. I'm trying to be able to talk through the crying. So I just, I am all for like, just let your feels feel please. Yeah. And so, and- and I'm, I've want to express too, like I'm loving this. I, not yeah. that you're, not that you're emotional. I, I love that you're capable of doing this because most of us are not. Oh. I mean, yeah, you, you're you're letting it. Yeah, you're letting it. And and uh, I just want to say I honor you. Yeah, for thank that. you. Appreciate you know? that. Yeah, it's. I mean, that is. I am. I feel like I'm researching myself, right? Like I, I'm dating the hell out of myself. I'm putting all the energy I ever put into anything else into me, right? So it is this like getting to know me. And so you mentioned 16 and the moment that came to mind was in fact, actually I'm 17 maybe. And I'm okay. walking down the stairs. I grew up in a pretty, we had a pretty big home. Um, and I'm walking down these stairs cause, and my family is in the living room and you can't see the stairs from there. And everyone was laughing and they were having a good time. And, I don't know what it was, but something about that moment. And it was like, they don't know you. Like it, they don't know you. You're not part of this family. Yeah. And what I did was, it was so yeah, interesting. Crying. Thanks. Yeah. I sat, I, down, I sat down on the stairs instead yeah. of going down. I just sat down and cried. Yeah. But also I couldn't get up. I couldn't get up. I wanted to hear it for some reason. So in therapy, I have done work through that, um, EMDR, and I have gone back, you know, in my mind and sat down with that Kylie, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember one time in EMDR trying to like have this moment where I was trying to like ask this Kylie to like, let's get up. We don't have to stay here. You know, we don't have to stay here. And it was like, I was feeling frustrated because like she wouldn't move. <laughs> and then yeah. I remember in EMDR, I remember feeling like it was because she wasn't meant to like. That was an important moment. She wasn't meant to because she was outside. She wasn't meant to get up. I was meant to sit there, I feel like. I was meant to sit yeah. there and really face. I don't fit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't fit. And so that I tried from 17 to 21. Went to, you know, went on the mission. Came home early because gay. And, you know, they had encouraged <laughs> me not to tell my family about it, like what had happened. And um oh gosh okay yeah i it was a tough exiting was tough um it was tough i wasn't able to like talk to my family until they put i had to go through this disciplinary court and i was in argentina and so i wasn't able to they didn't want me to talk to them until after that had happened and then so three days after that (laughs) i was able to talk to them and they you know they had suggested not to share it with them. So I came home devastated, you know, um, depressed, very worried because being sent home early from your mission is like as bad as being divorced. Like it's, those are very like huge things in that religion. Not so much anymore, um, at all. Thank God. (laughs) Um, but I didn't know how to deal with it. And I eventually did share with my parents, you know, and, it was just, I remember them asking me like, are you a lesbian? And I couldn't even say the word. I couldn't even say it without crying. It was just like, I don't know. I just know that this keeps happening and I don't know what to do about it. Right. And so I eventually left the church because I just couldn't. And I tell people that the first time I left the church, it was because gay. The second time I left the church is because it isn't true. (laughs) And that has made all the difference. Um, so that means I went back and I did go back. I did go back, um, after being married to a woman during proposition eight in California. I don't know if you remember all that. We, uh, it was like back when they were voting on, you know, gay marriage and shit. And we went to California. I, I do and remember it. Yeah. Thing. I, and, I do uh, remember it because, yeah. because I was, I was still feeling very homophobic and didn't support it. So everybody there you go. go see, yeah, exactly. So we did the damn thing. We, we, we had a wedding and I mean, it was great. Um, we did not, our marriage did not last the length of time, obviously. Um, yeah. And she decided actually 
to go back to the Mormon church. And I had married an ex-Mormon because honestly, ex-Mormon community is a big part of connection because you are coming out on this thing that just feels like nobody's going to get what the fuck I just went through. Like nobody's going to get why I stayed or why I kept going or why I went back, you know? Um, But so she did go back and it was obviously heartbreaking. Um, And within the month I was back, I was back within the month. Um, In my living room over here, there is a chest. Uh, It's just sitting there. I need to get it into my storage room. But in that chest is all my mission shit and like church shit. And I went to that thing in my garage back this, you know, 2000, when is this? 2011. I go to my garage and I open that thing. There was something about, I just went and found the Book of Mormon and read it and had this experience. And that was a Wednesday. By Sunday, I was back at the church. Um, I was angry. I was angry about being there. I felt like I had given, I felt like I'd been given this answer that that was where I needed to be. And I was pissed about it. Um, But the thing was, what I actually got back was my family, my community, right? They like quickly push me through to like get into leadership positions, right? Like it was, I was in a small, small Georgia town. Like, I mean, they needed help and, um, it was a fast ride and I met, um, my son's dad during that time. And this is the part where everyone's like, I don't get it. And I don't know how to explain it to you other than just, I met a really good human and we had an amazing kid and he lives two buildings over <laughs> in the same apartment complex and Levi runs between us and it's beautiful. And we have an amazing co-parenting relationship and I love his girlfriend. And, um, it's a beautiful example of just connecting through conflict instead of contending through it. Honestly, um, right. that is kind of like my mission. I feel like in life is just to teach that, that like we can connect through conflict right? It doesn't have to be this end all be all thing. We're terrified of it because we haven't been taught how to actually feel what it feels like. You know, we're not actually like taught to, we don't know who we are, right? So many of us are just told who we are, you know, told who we are. And it just, it sucks that it like at 40, you know, this all thing. And it was before 40, we left the church. I guess I should go back. He and I end (laughs) up married, have a baby, do the thing but I end up paralyzed when my son is six months old. I wake up paralyzed, screaming. I'm asleep. I wake up. I'm in pain. I can't feel anything down the right side of my body. Oh my Um, gosh. It was insane. And it was April, 2014. So just past 10 years ago. So that moment, of course, shifted everything for my family. And I lost. I mean, the job was lost. Everything was lost. Everything felt like it was lost at the time. (laughs) To be honest, it was a lot of loss and that loss affected me greatly, um, for years, for years because it had affected so much of my body and it affected how I thought I could parent and the things I was excited about parenting. Um, it affected my body in other ways, right. That like, aren't fun to talk about. Um, I was, with a cane and a walker and in a hospital bed for a long time. And I've had five back surgeries. I have two implants that help me, right? Like I have a pain pump that has me on my feet and like all of those things are amazing and they're miraculous, but I couldn't, something was wrong up here. And it wasn't until I read The Untethered Soul. I usually have it nearby, but I read this book. <laughs> sure. That just Mark- like literally blew my mind apart with like how my thoughts and emotions were driving yeah. me. And yes. I only got three pages in. I put it down to start practicing the damn thing. And that was mm-hmm. 2024, January. And oh, I am okay. not kidding you when I tell you that not just, it's not that I'm healed. But I stopped calling my leg my bad leg. I stopped calling my back my bad back. And I started calling them my healing leg and my healing back. And and I noticed a shift in the pain. And I noticed a shift in my body. My body started losing weight. <laughs> like my mind was clear. Like it was this like, holy shit, it really is here. If we can accept our reality and stop right. wishing for something to be different. Like it's, it's a whole new playground. It's a whole new playground and everything just, it's like the universe was just waiting for me because that 10 year mark with that, with that back, what happened 10 years ago was it was like my mind, body, spirit, all disconnected. 
Like, right. I feel like the church stripped me of spirit. Right. And body, I felt like betrayed me. I hated it. I was so angry. Mm. And so all I had was my mind and I went, I went real deep into it. You can hear I'm a processor. I'm a talker. I'm like, I, I went real deep. And I've always been in mental health. I've, I was a recreation therapist. That's what I did for work. I loved it. I led groups on this stuff. and But there was something just up here that just still wasn't clicking in. And so when I, when I went through the certification to be the attachment coach, I went through that in 2022. And I was super excited about it. I loved talking about attachment. I loved teaching it. But there still was something not ready to be coaching, to not be coaching on it. And it wasn't yeah. until I really got a hold of like, okay. Okay. I say it now that thought plus emotion equals thinking and thinking equals suffering. And not everyone says that out there, but the, just that equation to me is just, it has released me of so much, including pain. And I'm not saying that I'm pain free. I am definitely in chronic pain, but when you, God, when you just accept that that's what your situation is, it is just so different and you move different yeah. and, and the way you show up is different. Like, it's just been this, my story sounds bonkers. It does. It sounds bonkers. And, and when I look at all these different chapters, I mean, sometimes it's like, they sound like different characters. I mean, look, there's one right there, that right there. That's my mission. That's my mission plaque. Right. And, and I pulled that out of that box the other day and was like, holy shit, look at her. Like, look at her. I don't even recognize her. Right. And, but those are all part of me and you can't just move on through something and leave parts behind. It doesn't work. So you get stuck. And that's what happened. And so honestly, feeling embodied, it feels like enlightenment. And it has changed the course of everything for me. And and sharing that with others has been this ripple effect that I never could have imagined. And when, when I think back, even 10 years ago to Kylie in that hospital bed, Right. She never like I'm laughing and because I really have like in my mind gone and sat with that Kylie and like laughed with her. Sure. Look who we created. Right. They just I want to go back really fast. Is it Martin Singer? I think is the one who wrote the Untethered Soul. Michael, Something Singer. Michael, Michael, Ma- Michael Singer. Singer. OK. Mm-hmm. I was super close. He goes so, by Mickey. You know. Yeah, Michael. I am always having it around. It, I put it down. I, I read it. Three pages, mm-hmm. put it down. Three months, I practiced not letting any emotion through without feeling it. I did it mm-hmm. all day long. Yes. And it right. wasn't exhausting. It wasn't difficult, but it did take a pause. It did take breath. It did take yeah. slowing down. It did take being like, oh, I feel sad right now. Right? Like, can I give you an example? The other morning. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> the other morning, I woke up sad. I actually woke up crying. This is like a week ago. Mm. Mm. I woke up crying and I was like, well, that was interesting. That doesn't happen often. But I know now what my feelings feel like. So I knew it was sadness immediately. And so when I sat with the sadness, which just means to feel it, I just feel it. And I kind of locate where I'm feeling it, right? And then I just hold. I just hold. And then as I held... I, the thought came through and it was something about support. And when the, when support came through, it was something about family. And so when I really got to it, I was like, Oh, I'm feeling sad. Yesterday I'd had a big day, big moment, right. For my, for my business. And I was feeling sad that I didn't really have a family who was cheering me on or a family who was like stoked for me or like, how are you? How's it going? I mean, it's, it's been a year and, um, I was feeling sad about it. So I sat with that sadness and I cried. I cried. Emotions actually only take about 30 to 90 seconds to go through. Like if we will actually allow them, they want to release. They're just a message. They're just a message to say, hey, there's a need probably not being met. Or maybe there's a boundary that needs to be set. Something needs to be upheld. Like it's just a message. And so when I got the message, I was like, okay, I'm ready to say that. I'm ready to say that vulnerably to my parents that I don't feel safe to be vulnerable with you. I'm ready to say oh, that. Wow. Yeah. And it took that moment. I wouldn't have that moment if I hadn't dealt with that sadness. So let me tell you how my day got better. So okay. normally Kylie in the past, right, would have stayed in bed, would have like curled up probably fetal position, which feels good sometimes. Sometimes you got to do that. I'm not like shitting sure. on that. But I would have stayed there all day. I wouldn't have moved. I would have just fallen into it. 
God. So after feeling it and doing the thing, I got up about my day and it's not, I'm not faking it. I'm not faking it to make it. It's that it literally has been dealt with. It's feel and deal, right? Like yeah, it's, sure. like it's been dealt with. So I go about my day. I get invited to this like um, queer chamber of commerce thing. I'm like, awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's go to that. And I go to that that night which I wouldn't have gone to before because I would have been so depressed and hadn't had sure. up that morning that it was no way I was going to deal with people. I go to this thing and they're like, here's the raffle. Has everybody done it? And I'm like, what are we supposed to do? And they're like, you just throw your business card in. I was like, oh shit. So I run up there last, throw that thing in. You know, they pulled my name out. And, of course they did. <laughs> and that never happens to me, okay? That, I don't win shit. And so they pull this thing out. I see my card because it's gorgeous. I am going to show you. It's so freaking beautiful. Let me see. I see my card. And I'm like, oh, holy shit. And they and they say, queerly that. attached. Like I have just joined this chamber of commerce, right? Queerly attached. And I fly, I run up there like I hit a soccer goal and fucking World Cup. And <laughs> like I'm flying an airplane. I ran up like a crazy person. I like to do a little bow and I took it and I go, I didn't even know what it was. I go off to the side and I open this thing up. The first thing I see is seven hundred and fifty dollar value, and I'm like, "What the fuck is that?" Oh my that? gosh! <laughs> what the? Uh, listen, I pulled it out, and it was a seven hundred fifty dollar voucher for this like dope place. I should shout it out, Pinstripes, and it's like an Italian bistro with bocce and bowling. It's like fancy, and it was basically oh like you can have a party. It was my birthday week, you know, like it was oh. my birthday week. I was gonna throw a party for myself anyway. Now, it's okay, I'm not saying that that's because you know I dealt with my shit. No, I am saying it's because I dealt with my shit. What I'm yeah, saying is I didn't you win, but I yes. did have that moment because of a choice I made earlier in the day. Right. That's how critical choices are. Like, right. shit, man. It is so critical. That's the way we create the future. Every choice, right? So yes. we can pause and breathe and actually feel, deal, right? Come on, man. You're a fucking creator. It's like choose your own adventure. Right. There's, you know what? I, so I recognized that book as soon as you said it because I actually wrote an article – that. about that uh gosh i don't know it was like beginning of last year the beginning of 2023 or so because there were two things that i pull out of that the first one is exactly what you said which is the that voice. yeah that you that you have to wait sorry what did you say i was saying the voice in your head yeah the, well that you need to be able to to stop i mean the big things sorry i'm going to start this over yeah, yeah you're good the, the the two big things was was that you need to feel the pain because mm. we run from that right we healing go, begins that with pain healing yeah. begins with pain like we're talking yeah. about yes. attachment wounds and that's like yeah. that's why my podcast is called the place of pain right the place mm. of pain because we do all react from these places of pain right and sometimes we get stuck in right. them and right. it's because we're attached to the outcome, right? If we're attached to the outcome of anything, it means we're grasping for control. And that's not it. That's not where you find control nice. and power. You find control and power when you figure out, oh, all I have control of is this right here. My choices and actions? Damn, and my thoughts I can control? Holy shit. And I can sit with my emotions? Goddamn, I'm powerful, right? Like, And all right. of us have that ability and opportunity to tap into it, right? And so many yes. don't. It's terrifying to do that, I think, at first because – it's almost like, what's going to happen if I actually sit with this? You know, what's, right. what am I well, going uh, to pull up? What am I going to have to deal with? Yeah. Shove it back down, right? But it, it always hurts. comes up. It always comes yeah. up. <clears throat> Supposedly, we run toward pleasure and run away from pain. We don't want to nope. feel Healing that. begins with pain. They're wounds. If you think about wound care, you know, they got to go in and like get that. It, it, it hurts. Right. And I've been through five back surgeries. It fucking hurts to heal. But honestly, I remember when they did my spinal cord stimulator this, the stem packet is down here, like top of my hip area. And then there's okay. leads from that at my T9 up here in my spinal cord that are like okay. scarred into place. So Oof. you can't do much moving because they have to scar into place. And so that first oh. like six, eight weeks, it's just like, you're just in bed, right? Like any Ooh. sudden thing and that thing. So, and then they would have to go back in. So no, right. that thing hurt like a bitch. And I remember that it itched for over two years. Like I, and it's right on my bra line. Right. And so I'm just like, yeah. oh, damn. but I don't even think about that thing anymore. I don't even think about it, but that thing hurt. And I could not stop thinking about it back then. Do you know right. what I mean? Like that's the same. I mean, that's a metaphor, but that is it. That is it. Is it, it has to hurt to heal. Yeah. I thought that 
Singer's book was great because it's kind of a, th there's a, an Indian philosophy called Advaita Vedanta. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how mm -hmm. familiar you are. Okay. Yeah, but talk but, about it. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So the whole point of it is to ask, is to say, who am I? And to continue mm. saying, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? And, mm -hmm. and, and that, and being able to do that, you go, well, Hey, I feel an emotion. Well, who am I? What's feeling that emotion? Okay. I mm -hmm. feel physical pain. Well, what is actually feeling that? Can I observe this? If I can observe it, how can I be it? Mm. Mm. So I thought that was, that was really good. So when I think of attachment, I think of attachment in like the, the Indian philosophy way that you go, well, I'm attached to an outcome. I'm attached to something that has to do with the world that is transient. Yeah. And then that we want to be detached from those things, right? Like you're talking like Buddha attachment, like the whole, yes. like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, right. so, 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 so correct, correct me. Let me, no, it's <laughs> not wrong. That is, that is, that is a thing. So attachment I, theory is what we are talking about, right? Is okay. Yeah. Let's hear that. I'm talking about, right. But I, um, the place of pain podcast, right? I have it called attached to the outcome as my like subline, because I think what my point is just that we get stuck because we are so attached, right? Like that. So it's really like, we don't be attached to the outcome. Like I say, sure. my only outcome that I'm attached to is like, I've planted my flag on, I will not self abandon again. Like I'm not mm. self abandoning and I don't want to be with anyone that does. That's the truth. I don't, I don't want to be inviting insecure attached, right? Like, so let's talk about attachment since you, you asked. Do, All right. Can you, just, can you define that too? Actually yeah, self-abandonment because yeah. I've seen, okay, it's part of it. Good. Yeah, Sorry. it's part of it. So <laughs> attachment theory, right? So we all come into this world. We need connection. It's just part of us. It's an actual yes. like drive attachment. And we have these attachment figures, right? That are modeling these things for us. And also we are watching them and seeing how our needs are getting met. Right. So as infants, we li like literally need these people to survive. Right. Yeah. And so as we grow, right, let, let's use an example. I'll use sit down Kylie, since you mentioned, um, that was what I thought I was going to call my podcast. And here's where it's from is there's this, uh, old family video and I'm like jumping up and down in front of the camera. I'm probably like four or five. Right. <laughs> and they're trying to film my older brother. Right. And, and I keep just being like, nah, 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 you know, whatever. And <clears throat> they had four kids and like four like four and a half years. Like we were all little stair steps. Okay. So I'm like trying to do some shit and dad just keeps saying, sit down, sit down, Kylie, sit down, sit down, Kylie, sit down. It became a joke. It became a joke yeah. in the family. Like sit down, Kylie, here's attachment. Okay. Here's attachment trauma. I, I, my parents did not mean for me to make that mean. Don't talk. Don't express. Don't look mm. for ever the spotlight or don't be proud of yourself or don't, you know, that's not what they were trying to say. They were just trying to film their kid. Right. And it just wasn't my turn. Right. But we make shit mean stuff all the time about us. Right. Sure. And so the sit down Kylie for me is like my caption of like attachment trauma, right. Stuff that we're doing all the time to our children that we don't even realize. Right. Every time your kid is like talking to you and you're like scrolling and just going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Right. Right. Why do you think he's going to like want a relationship with you as like a teenager or a young adult when you're not even interested in him right now? Right? right? Like that's sending messaging, like all that stuff. We have to make it mean something because he has to stay attached to me. Right. And so if I keep doing that, maybe he makes it mean I'm boring. I'm not interesting. People yeah. don't pay attention to me. And so then he moves into a relationship and he's with someone who's constantly on their fucking phone. You think he's going to be triggered? Of that's course. attachment trauma. That's yeah. attachment trauma. <laughs> and, and so if, I mean, tell me if I'm getting this right. So the, the, the theory then is that we, we make evaluations of our, of ourselves based on behavior of the people to whom we are attached. Yes. Yes. Okay. So because it's this dependency, right? It's how do you feel on this? Like, let's say it's like a spectrum of safety and security. Sure. Like, how do you feel in relationship to people? right? Do you get really, really, really upset when you haven't heard from them in two hours, right? Or are you like, I really, really stonewall if you upset me and I don't talk to you for three days, right? It's this like spectrum of reaction. They're just strategies. These attachment styles, they're just strategies. They're okay. just like things that we've come up with to keep ourselves feeling safe and secure in connection, right? And so let's keep on with the spectrum. You've got the spectrum, right? You've got anxious, 
avoidant. And then okay. in the middle, we have one that can kind of pull from both. And all of those have names, and there's so many people call them different names, but I'm just going to leave it there. But the one in the middle, when someone can pull from both the avoidant and the anxious side, right, a lot of times those people are growing up in homes where there's like a lot of chaos, or maybe they did think there was emotional safety, but then nope, no, there's not. It's a lot of like that, right? So it just becomes like, I've got to be hyper vigilant. If I can watch someone's body language, I can know what's going to happen and I can avoid it. Yeah. You know, I looked at all four of the, it was, it was there were the three primary ones that you brought up. Cause then there was, those, secure. So yeah, those are the insecure attachments. Oh, gotcha. Okay, because I because I there was dismissive avoidant, yeah, dismissive, dismissive avoidant, avoidant, fearful avoidant, anxious, okay. preoccupied, and those okay. are the insecure attachments. And then there's securely attached or secure uh, attachment. The I read all f- what I guess all four uh, that's on your website. I read all four of the descriptions, and all four of them I kind of went, yeah, I do that. Is that common? That yeah, that, we'll yeah, look that, at- that could probably be. First of all, that could mean that you're fearful avoidant, right? It also means that we don't always show up the same in each connection. Maybe you show up anxious in your romantic relationship. I'm right now showing up avoidant in my parental relationship, right? I'm showing up avoidant. I haven't had that call. I haven't said that thing. And so what am I doing? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So that, right. So as part of mine, I'm saying that I practice secure. I coach I coach (laughs) my clients to practice secure. That's all it is, right? It's like, hey, this is a practice. We've got to do this. So when I notice actions of insecurity, I check them and I go, oh, I'm showing up insecure there. I need to address that. I need to address that because if I'm out of alignment and not congruent, that's the friction. That's the thing Mm -hmm. that makes it just crazy up top, right? Just the buzzy, the Rolodex of like, I don't do this and I'm not this and limiting beliefs is what they are. They're just limiting beliefs that are keeping us away from our actual like higher self, right? Right, right. Yeah. When I, when I did the quiz, it said I was, I was a dismissive avoider. I saw that. I saw that. I, I will say, I'm going to add, I'm going to add this about my quiz. It's 13 questions. Yeah. Okay. It's not like a science backed up. It's no, a fun, no, it's is... just a way to kind of be like, look, really think about how do you show yeah. up in these scenarios? You know, it was a lot. No, the, it was how many 13 questions? Yeah. 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 I mean, it was enough that I was like, cause I was looking at things. I'm like, Hmm. Mm, I don't. I mean, oh, so it took you too I, long because you had to think too hard. <laughs> I had to think through some of them. Some of them I was like, well, in a lot of, and so I would go with, what do I do the majority of the time? What do you do the majority like, of the time? Yep. And then I had to think about what do I do today? Because if I, if you had said, what did you do three years ago? Exactly. Say pre-transition, it was different. And what do I do today? It's different because I have a much more secure relationship i'd say with myself there it is even than 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 i ever did but remember we were talking about you can't heal something until you feel the pain i think it's a pretty common transgender experience not to feel emotions Mm. and that was the big thing that changed for me especially with hormone therapy i went wow what the flying fuck is this I was like, I'm hurting. Why is this hurt? You know, this doesn't, that's not right. And that was what. It's a transition in so many me. ways. Oh, it is. But I mean, it really, I mean yeah, I it's like going through puberty and, again, right? All of it. And then like mm-hmm. you're discussing. And so, so for, let's just say like society, right? Let's, let's talk about the queer attachment. Let's talk about that. Yes, yes, please, so please. Queer, I wanted to. <laughs> queer attachment, right? So all these things about attachment, like we are making meaning out of everything. We're having a very internal experience in the external world. Yes, straight people have attachment trauma too. All humans do. It's a need, it's a desire, it's a drive. However, the reason why I'm focusing on this aspect with this like lens of queerness, right, is because we also have the additional societal abandonment, societal rejection, parental rejection, religious trauma, right? All of that stuff, hell yes, that has messed up things inside. And if you are raised as a boy, right? As a young man, right? Then you are taught, don't feel, don't, don't, don't express, right. definitely hide. Mm-hmm. And then you're feeling things like you're sharing that you were feeling then, of course not. And so we learn to people please. And we yeah. learn to like, just abandon ourselves. Like, that's what I say to people, like the real heartbreak in a lot of these like heartbreaking situations is the heartbreak of self-abandonment. When you really look back and you're like, shit, 
look at all these choices I made where I should have, oh. right? You can see it. And then that's some grief. That's some grief. So, so now I'm getting the self-abandonment. Self-abandonment is when you choose others. Self-abandonment over, over is when your... you disconnect from self to connect to others. That sucks. It does suck. Can well, I read it's totally what I totally what I did. <laughs> wait, wait, what did you say? <laughs> I, you said that sucks. I said it does suck. Can I read you a poem? It's not even by me. <laughs> read me a poem. But I sure. am like literally like I am like if if I had if I hadn't like I do have my way. I'm my own business owner, right? I could, but I'm like a self abandonment guide. Like I'm gonna guide okay. you back from this road because it's hard because it is very you're the hard. only one to blame and a lot of it, right? And right. we victimize ourselves with our own story all the time. Right. And that's why I was telling you before, it feels like what we do in the transgender community, first and foremost, is protect the rest of the world against who we are. And when I said that, like, whatever, an hour ago, did yeah. you go, uh, yeah, honey, that's self-abandonment. Did you think that in your yes, head? Yes, I did. You- and I was like, yes, thank you. This is this is what we're talking about. You yeah. did that for the entire world? Like, why yeah. is that your responsibility to make them comfortable? Be- oh, because it was just like we were talking about. We have the, the, uh, the what was it, the obligation to educate everybody else about? Yep, yep. Yeah. And it's not, it's not your, right. And so once you start to release these things that are not yours, honestly, I do think life slows down and your mind does get quieter because you just learn to can only control what you can. I mean, and and look at, look at me, like, you know, you didn't know me three years ago, but three years ago, like the way I like to say this is that, you know, three years ago is a, I was a crabby old man waiting to die. And, and now I am a vibrant woman, just happy about living. And and this that, emotional, sorry. yeah. Like it's, that was the point where you're supposed to go. Yeah, look at how vibrant you are, Amy. Go ahead. Well, I was getting emotional from what you said. I, I think it's like that. Like, do you like your transition saved your life, right? Like that. Oh like, my gosh, yes. Right, no, and I, so that's yes. that me being out and being able to say I'm a lesbian without crying saved my life. But why is that? Why were we in such a dire situation over this? It's because of, right, the societal this thing, social, which presses yeah. us down and tells us we're wrong and tells right. us to, like, you got to do this to fit in this box. And it just, it wasn't a box for me. And just, I was never going to fit in it. No, no. So, I, and, and I, I've actually, I've had this, I've had a conversation recently about, you know, the boxes, because we have social boxes, you know, and that's fine, sort of ish. But but we're trying to make now science only be boxes, be about boxes, right? That we go, well, science says X, 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 Y, right? Science says that there's only a penis and vagina. Science says this. And it's like, but none of that is even true. Because like science is about, not about sticking things in boxes, but like, Expansion. Boxes. It's about yeah. expansion and it's evolution. Sure the boxes and, yeah. are right. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And, that, and that's the best we can do. The best we can do is question that. Mm. Is go, why, you know, what what is it? What are we doing? You know, mm. what is it that we observe? And does it fit our theory? And the thing is, if it doesn't fit our theory, then then we don't blame we don't blame the observation, we blame the theory. It's pretty goddamn st- like if you're in if you're in chemistry and and uh, I mean, I have some experience here, but if you if you observe something and you go, well, that com- completely contradicts every single thing I know about whatever it is like, that's a beautiful thing. Exactly. Instead of being like, nope, nope, nope. You got to get back in. Right. No way. No, I know you're it's right. A, I think that's a bo- that's- beautiful way of explaining that. It's it's the cover of like one of the one of the leading scientific journals kind of thing. You go, wow, we just found an observation that throws all of our theories, you know, into disarray. In in social in social environments, we go, ooh, we observe that you are different from our social expectations. We're just going to pretend it's untrue. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the thing is, with the your fault too. Yes, that that, (laughs) and it's your fault. (laughs) Yeah. Well, of course. And you say, okay, sure. I have to, because I have to keep living and moving on in this world. Right? Like, yeah, it's terrible. So the good news is, you know, like I said, their styles, traits, strategies, whatever you want to call them, they can be shifted on that spectrum of safety and security. Right. So like yeah. kind of the, like, 
attachment theory folks, they call it earn secure. I like learn secure. Um, I mean, you absolutely can reprogram these strategies, right? But it does take being willing to be uncomfortable. It can yeah. be uncomfortable to uphold a boundary, right? It can be uncomfortable to say no because you want to say no, right? Those are things that we just are not taught to do for ourselves. And so as we start to do them, it is part of that, like, you were the one you were waiting for. Like, we all are looking for this, like, safe adult, and they're out yeah. there. It's you, and it's right here, right? And so, like, when you can start to bring that back in, I think that's the connection to self that it just becomes like self abandoning is not even an option now. Like it's not even a choice for me. Right. And that's not to say that I don't get triggered or that I don't have conflict. I would not even be able to tell you how much conflict I've had this year in starting to create what I am, but yeah. the peace and ease that my life has had to wake up on my birthday last week alone and unpartnered for the first time since 2006 and not wow. feel sad or lonely and yeah. when I realized that, I thought, wow, and how many times in all those years past did I feel lonely and I wasn't alone? So I'm the answer, right? Like in all of these little patterns, the common denominator is you, right? And so like whether it's that your picker's off or whether that like you just are too scared to be uncomfortable, it comes down to you. Like it's your choice to change, right? And change has consequence. And that doesn't mean... Yeah negative or positive consequence right. can be very positive but if you're afraid to face it you're just going to keep spinning out in these same spirals yeah that was beautiful by the way oh, the, the, the adult you're looking for is you yeah it is you it, was, I think it, was, hey, it's, it has to be you and you know how i made this choice i made this choice like this i realized I had not, I realized I had been relationship hopping. I was terrified. I didn't know I was, I, I mean, I knew I was relationship hopping. I didn't know why I didn't realize how alone I felt. I didn't realize sure. not just how alone I felt, but that I was afraid to be alone. Right. Like that's mm -hmm. when you can't even sit by yourself, like something's off. Right. And like having that moment where you're sitting and you're like, Oh shit, I don't even know who I am. That's scary. That's scary. So I'd rather just please let's just stay in partnership. Well, I know who I am, right? <laughs> and so not having that, I think, is just this like moment of realizing like higher self, she's out there all the time, or they're out there all the time, or he's out there all the time. Like you can see them. So just start practicing beating them, right? If your higher self doesn't show up late, start practicing that, right? <laughs> Like, honestly, if your higher self shows up in conflict, very aware and very like down to narrate their fears, go practice that, right? Instead yeah. of like avoiding conflict, just show up and be like, hey, I'm going to tell you for real. My tendency right now is to run and not speak to you for a week. Like, I'm so scared to speak to you right now. I don't even know what I'm going to say, yeah. but I wanted to let you know at least that I am fearful, but that I also believe that we can talk through this, right? Instead of checking out, running back, and then four days later, you're sending a, hey, we good? You know? And that anxious person <laughs> right. is like, thank God, because I haven't heard from you in three days. So of course we're good. We're fine. We love each other. And we're back together. Right. And now the nonsense starts again, right? It's a of course. spiral, man. And we just keep it up. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. You're describing so much of my life. It's, um... yeah. it's relatable as fuck. It really it's relatable is. As fuck because it is attachment. Like it just yeah. is. It just yeah. is. I think even a lot of this stuff about like love languages and first of all, that guy's homophobic. So let's not support them. And you can take that out. But this no, stuff no, about no. love languages is just that I think when I think about it, like mine is probably words of affirmation, right? And I think about that and I'm like, it's because I didn't receive any of that. I didn't get that when I was sure. a kid. You know how hard is it getting out of boy? Like, no way I did not get that, right? Or someone who is like, what's the other one? Like gifts, right? I don't know. I just think it's interesting yeah. if you think back. I think it probably is, has more to do with what were you lacking and what do you really, really need, right? Probably, probably. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident my big one is quality time. And did you get quality time with your family? I am Generation X, babe. Okay. You tell me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. My son's is quality time. And you know why? Because why? I did not spend a lot of time with him. Yeah. Not until I started really understanding attachment theory. And when I started understanding attachment theory as a parent, it is gold, but it is also so much more pressure because you oh, see, sure. 
you see how you're inflicting it, right? But it also means you can see how to repair it. And that's what's been beautiful is the conversations that I've had with my son where I've just sat down and been like, hey, I am so sorry about how this, that, or that went down, right? I, how, how do you feel about that, right? Like just mm. asking how your kid feels. I had yeah. one question that I really was scared to ask him, but I knew that I needed to ask it. And the reason I was scared was because I – I was going to make it mean something about me, right? So I didn't ask mm -hmm. it, right? There's avoidance. But I wanted to ask him if he ever felt lonely. He's an only child, right? Yeah. yeah. And his dad was on the road for two years, right? And we moved here and and we, we, we left Idaho in a great community there and came here and things didn't go as, I mean, they went like most lesbian U-Hauls go. I mean, that's the truth. And so now here we are <laughs> in Kansas in a two bedroom apartment. Right. But during that time of that chaotic, I didn't check in with him as often as I should have. Right. And then I blamed myself for that for a long time. And so I was right. terrified. I had our, I, like 2022 was like my new year's which was just like, I'm going to be just the best damn mom. Like I'm going to just fucking show up better every time for him. <laughs> and please know, like I'm not, this kid has never been spanked. He's been yelled at three times in his life. Like this is not, right. I'm a gentle parent. But I'm also a very aware parent, and so I want to be sure that I'm not sending messages to him, right, that he's not important. And oh, so yeah. I finally asked him about the loneliness, and the answer was what I was afraid it was. But you know that, like, I held space for it, and we had one of the most connecting conversations we've ever had. And my relationship with my son, I don't know, I noticed – one time when he's about seven, I was like, I, it's like, I'm a different person with him. Like I actually am like more playful with other kids. I'm not very playful with mine. I might like, why is that? And I realized it was like these, I had these high expectations of him. Right. Mm. And it was almost like, it was almost like I wouldn't allow him to be as playful. Right. As like a normal kid would. Right. And, and that did shape him. He's a very well-mannered, <laughs> very mature kid. But I feel some, you know, like I took something from him of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so sure. what I decided, what, 2022 is I am just going to be as playful as I am. I am a very playful person, but I wasn't showing up like that for my kid. So I started and oh my God, my kid is resilient as fuck. Kids are resilient. Kids are resilient. Like, just, so don't yes. be scared to ask them anything, right? Because if you're scared to ask them something, then for sure they're scared of asking you something. Right. So <laughs> very true. Very true. Anyway, that was my I, attachment and parenting is just like, it's a beautiful journey, to be honest. I, I think it's really awesome because you can see how these choices are shaping who they are. And so when yeah. you start to be very yes. intentional with your attention, pff, I'm creating a little superstar who can like handle his emotions, talk about his emotions. Right. He is kind. He's compassionate. He hears me do some of these interviews and like, he'll say like, that's awesome, mom. You sounded so great, mom. Or like, he's cheering me on. Mm. And like, I don't know. I think it's a different thing for a lot of 10 year olds. And I, yeah, I definitely give attachment theory, like the head nod for that. For sure. I'm very glad. I'm very, very glad to know that there are parents out there who are capable of doing this. Mm. Cause I mean, obviously you and I had some troubles growing up. Many mm. of us out here, everybody listening is like, yeah, I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm glad that you're, that you're taking a, uh, like a proactive. We're cycle breakers, right? We're cycle mm -hmm. breakers. And I say, right. I always right. want to add this, you know, and I don't know if my parents are listening to any of these or not. I don't know. Um, and it's not that we don't speak, right? It's just that like, we don't speak on real shit, right? Like right. it's just right. not real. And I have a very low tolerance for inauthentic, like inauthentic connection. I just yes. I have a very, I, if you can tell, like I like to deeply connect. Right. And so there's just that kind of connection just isn't very satisfying. And it's, it's, it's been scary to talk about some of this stuff because of course it is going on the internet. Of course it is being spread. Right. And, right. and I shared with them that I was feeling afraid to do some of that because I was afraid of what might be thought or what was said. And so I, I parents, a lot of times, I think you said generation, generation X, our parents, right. A lot of the, like, <laughs> yeah. we did the best we could with what we had. Yep. I am not saying that you did not like, I am not saying that you did not. What I am asking for is a conversation right? Where we can sit down yeah. and you can hear from me about how I made that mean something about me and how that harmed me. 
right? That's right. the conversation. And if you could hold space right. for that, we will absolutely be able to connect because that's the repair that is needed. That's why here we are at 41 and you guys are what, 80, 75 years old. Like, sorry, mom, but I don't remember. How long. <laughs> it's like eight years younger than that. So whatever, but like, right. And it's like, it shouldn't be this way. It shouldn't be this way. And it would, I absolutely am like, it will be this way with your children when they're young. If you yeah. don't yeah. talk to them. Okay. You're not going right. to have adult right. child relationships with them. If, if you right. don't right. hear them and hold space for these things, because we hurt our kids all the time. Anytime you're rushing a kid out the door and like hollering at them and blah, blah, blah. You're rushing out the door. That's on you. Right. So, but we make it about them. Well, you can't tie your shit. Fuck man. How many times have we fucked? Fuck, fuck, right. And you just get all crazy. And you're like, right. And we're sitting here like spinning out and like yelling at them that they're not regulated. It's just yeah. so silly. They are little humans having a human experience and we rob them of it all the time. Right. No. Oh gosh. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Yeah, I just I, I, I get real amped. I I should I wish I'd wrote a, a parenting book. I said this about three years ago. I need to write a parenting book on attachment. I'm gonna plug this attachment nerd. The attachment nerd is is releasing one right now. I adore her work. I am gonna plug that book. Okay. I adore her work, and it's all about attachment and parenting. And okay. anytime I watch her reels, I'm like, yep, that's me and Levi. Yep, that's me. And, like, yes, I see the impact. It does actually make a difference. I have one one last question because I know we're running we're running low on time. One yeah. last question that that I did, you know it popped into my head. I, I sent you a list of questions, and the last question um, popped into my head first. Believe it or not, and and I'm, but I'm curious to know because you've gone through a lot, particularly with the Mormon Church, and so the question is just: Do you think those were? Do you think all of the intentions were good? Yeah, I'm gonna stick a question mark there. Do you think there all were the well intentions of who? The Mormon Church, everything that you went through with with the the church, your family. Do you think those were all well intended? You know, I don't. I don't put thought into people's intentions because we can't know. That would just be an an assumption. So I don't know what the intent was. Uh, I can speak to my parents' intent. My parents' intent was that we would be an eternal family and forever mm -hmm. in heaven. And that meant we had to live this way. Mm. And eternal family was the thing for my family. And we were very good Mormons and did all the things every week that we were, you know, that was very important to my family. Um, and I think that's why the grief has been so hard for them as three of their four have left the church, right? And that is not an uncommon story either. A lot of wow. folks their age are having adult children leaving this thing. And there is a lot of grief in that. There's a lot of grief on both sides. And I, you know, you shared, I think in the pre-call, but w we talked about, you were surprised by your grandparents' response. Is that correct? It was your grandparent mm -hmm. to just basically like, Hey, this news yeah, of transition, like we're yeah. going to, we're going to take some time. And, you know, I think that's so beautiful. And I think that's something for us too, for those of us who are queer and like having these types of transitions or coming out of the closet, like it is mindful, very mindful, very demure, right. To like actually give perspective to like, okay, we've been dealing with this all our lives. They just found out. Right. So like True. give some grace. That doesn't mean we tolerate being treated wrong, but allow some grace, right. Don't make it mean anything about you when they react. It doesn't mean anything about you. I like how you actually deflected my question, but then answered it. Did I really? Originally. Well, Did yeah, I, originally you said, originally you said, well, I don't want to talk about any other. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, I wasn't deflecting. That is my truth. Like I have found, <laughs> I find, I find assuming to be low vibration. Yeah. Like assuming no, was, and like, um, what's another, it was wishing, but it was a good deflection. It's a yeah. good, cause I'm like, you're, you said, you said, yeah, I don't think that's, that that's going to add any value. And I went, oh yeah, that's true. No, well, I mean, I mean, really, I just, I, to the church, I mean, we could go, that's a whole, there are pod, if your listeners are very interested, oh. I will plug another podcast, right? There are so many podcasts, um, the real FM, what's his name? Um, Mormon stories. That's a podcast okay. that's been going on for years. They, they talk a lot about the harm. They talk a lot mm. to people like me about the harm. Um, people get on and share their stories. And so if there is interest in that, I think that'd be a good one. Um, yeah. But I don't blame my parents. There's not blame for it. I, yeah. I believe that they are deeply entrenched in something that is their life. I, they are, and they love it and they love each other. And what, what I 
feel is not blame. What I feel is grief. And I want more, right? But that means I'm going to have to be the secure one. I'm going to have to be the one that's done the healing work, right? Yeah. I'm going yeah. to do that. And I won't be attached to the outcome. But I know that for me, something needs to be said, right? I know for me, there's something I need to speak on and not doing it would be people pleasing, would be self abandoning. And that's just not a choice I make anymore. Um, it's uncomfortable to have to have that type of conversation. But I also yeah. know there's this beautiful timeline where we connect through that. And I just think that's a whole nother future if we can do that. But that doesn't happen. Same thing. Don't win the 750 if you don't get out of bed that morning, right? <laughs> I won't have this beautiful future with them if I don't have a conversation. I'm not attached to it, right? But it already is what it is. So saying the thing is not going to change what it is. So I know what Good it point. is is not how I want to move in connection. Uh, when I think about like end of my life and I think about <clears> – <throat> being in bed and I'm at the end of it. Right. And let's say I'm alone. Let's say I'm not partnered. I don't want to be sad about that. I, I had sure. that thought and I was like, if I chase relationships, if I chase connection and I don't find it. And at the end of this thing, I look back and think it was a waste. Fuck that. And I was like, no, yeah, no, I'm not good. I'm going to do whatever the hell the work is to make sure that that is not it. So I say very proudly that I am securely single and and I'm, it, I'm not looking for anything. I am walking this path and it is so much brighter, right? When you are literally focused on yours and there will be people, you were one of them, right? People will come into your path, right? All of these choices lead you to people. The universe will drop the people right there when you're needed and you just keep showing up secure and practice, right? You just got to be better every day. There's no such thing as best, right? Better every day. Oh, that's, that's awesome. My, that's probably my final... Last bomb I can drop for you. <laughs> drop, drop the mic. Yeah. No, it's perfect. Now I'm this this has been seriously, I when I when we first connected, I was like, oh, there's gonna be a lot to talk about here. And there was. Um I just, you know, I since we're out of time, I'm I'm just, at this point just gonna say, you know, thank you so much for for showing up like you did, because these are not we don't want to talk about this kind of thing. We don't no. want to say, you know, it's, it's cause it's always our fault. And, yep. you know, yep. so, so thank you for, for all of that. And uh, yeah, I think it, there's, geez. there's power in like owning your story and accepting it. I mean, honestly, yeah. I think all the people that we like, my, I, you can't see, but I have a huge bookshelf here and it's just covered in books about this stuff. I love this mm. stuff, but everyone yeah. who's writing these books, right. Everyone has had, to go through that, to find this knowledge. Right. It's the truth. Yeah, I mean, talk about being right. a missionary. I'm like a missionary of that truth now. Like the truth that go. the universe is in you, right? Like it really, the power, the intuition, it is yours when you can learn what your goal is, right? And then make moves that align with it. The incongruency can stop, right? And that right. can shut everything else like right? And then we're not walking through life just like so fucking stressed all the time. That doesn't mean I'm not doing stressful things. I am doing stressful things. I'm a small business owner. It's insane out there that we have to wear all these hats and all the content and like, ah, but, but I'm handling it. I'm handling it and I'm not faking it. I have handled yeah. stress before, but I have handled it in ways that my body was screaming for me to stop handling it that way right? The body does keep the score. So handling the stress this way and to continue being this like lowered pain. And like, I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So it is. That's my it's island. I did tell you I was going to read a poem. I have to read the poem. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do the poem. The poem. It fell when I got okay. it. Um, so the poem was written here. It is. Okay. I went to an event in Florida and there was these gals there who had a typewriter, old Z typewriter. I'm going to shout them out at Merck the moment, M E R K the moment. Okay. And their question is, give me something to write a poem on and we'll write it out. And like come back in like 30 minutes. We'll have it for you. Okay. Perfect. So they said, what do you want it to be about? And I said, self-abandoning. And they were like, what? <laughs> like self-abandonment. Like, you know, that thing where you're like disconnect from self and like connect to them. And I'm just like, fuck off. I don't ever want to do that again. And they were like, oh yeah, we got you. We got you. We got you. Well, I ended up leaving that night. And I forgot about the thing and I flew home the okay. next day. So I get on the plane, 
remember this poem. I'm like, damn it. I pull up Instagram because I'm going to message them. I check their story first. And I see this poem in their story called A Permanent Address. And as soon as I read it, I knew it was mine. I knew it was mine. I started bawling. So I messaged them and I was like, I have gotten on this plane. I did not because there any way I could pay you. They send it to me and then this beautiful packaging and then this like beautiful, it's like on oldie paper, right? Yeah. Like cute. So I'm going to read is. this. Okay. A permanent address. Kelly J. That's her name who wrote it. All right. <clears throat> I never should have left me. I've been searching through bus stops, scanning grocery stores and bars, looking for who I was 10 years ago. And I can't find me. I've been gone for quite a while. Lost in acts of service, all-consuming love, polishing her plans to perfection as mine tarnish and rust. But I'm taking on a new form now, banishing bad habits back to their hell mouth as I grip myself by my own shoulders, shake free the abandonment. I've got my own hand now and I'm never letting go. And I was like, that's my poem. That's my poem. <laughs> I didn't tell them anything about me. <laughs> and they even put 10 years. <laughs> Looking that's for amazing. who I was 10 years ago. Yeah. They wrote that me that amazing. in February. Um, February 2024. And my back injury happened in April 2014. So oh. 10 years ago. I wouldn't have had that back injury. So interesting. Loved it. Love them. I have let them know that I am sharing that poem with everyone. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's pretty personal. I, and it, and it, it hits, it hits hard that it, it was does. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. All yeah. Right. Well, I appreciate well, let me. Chat. Yeah. Let me, let me go ahead and, and do the little closing. Uh, Can I share my like socials and stuff? Oh Is my God. Cool? I can't believe I forgot that. Yeah, please. Yeah, I did too. We, I mean, we really, this I'm was very idiot. candid. <laughs> was um, ridiculous. All right. Yeah, no, you? no, I'm at, like, I'm at queerly attached on all the things. Um, queerly attached.net. Um, and I've got my podcast coming out soon. I'm definitely going to have you on. And, uh, Thank it's you. called the place of pain podcast attached to the outcome. Um, what else about Curly Attached? I'm doing so. I'm doing local stuff. I've been selling out workshops. I'm starting speed oh friending. Gosh. That's been really cool. We're gonna do that on Sunday. Um, just I'm really just trying to connect the people. I just I want this message to get out, right? And and so following is helpful. Liking whatever. Hit me up. Let's chat. Right. Like literally, this right. is my vibe. This is me. I showed up exactly me today, um, and I really am about this work. I love it. It's so clear. And, and incidentally, uh, there, I've got four or five links, I think, already that, that I intended to put in. So cer certainly, awesome, queerlyattached.net. There is the quiz that I took that, that's uh, directly on, on queerlyattached.net. And then I've got at least your Facebook, your Instagram. I feel like there was one more. Oh, a TikTok. Let's throw a TikTok on because I, man, TikTok yeah. be wasting my time. I cannot believe how hard it is to make videos on that thing, but I'm getting faster. I'm getting faster. <laughs> no, you've got a ton of them and they're good ones too. So, Thank so the you. TikTok, yeah, they're, I love the bite sized, you know, the bite sized, here's a piece of wisdom. And you go, cool, thanks. You know how hard that is for me though, because I speak so long. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have to go in and edit. Like I actually only said something good at the end. <laughs> right. No, I mean, same. It's you so know, funny. I, Maybe this is why we connect. But yeah, I love it. This was a great chat. Yeah. I really appreciate it. It's been fun.